Welcome, one and all, to San Diego, California, Comic Con. At the Tin Roof. I've never been to the Tin Roof. This place is all right. We're packed from floor to rafters here. Let's start off by welcoming the Game Master to the stars, Mr. Spencer Crittenden. And of course, the mayor of Harmontown. The mayor. Sorry. What the hell's going on? Hey, I'm sorry. Please stop the music. Please, please stop the music. Please stop the music. Hi. Um, hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, don't be alarmed. There's been, a, uh, there's been a slight security breach, but we, we want everyone to have a very good time. There's, there's, been a, there's been a vulnerability in the paddock, in several paddocks. All the paddocks are very vulnerable. Um, but if you could please just calm down. I'm, uh, I'm slightly, there are raptors. But it's fine, just don't. Just don't move. They can't see you if you don't move. It, I, I thought that was T-Rex. Uh, no, uh, it's all of them. Uh, also Holy rat- shit, there, there's velociraptors in the paddock. Are we in the paddock? No, we are, we are outside of the We're paddock. We're not in the paddock. And it, and it <laughs> looks like they're coming towards us. Oh. All right, just just calm down, just please. Raptors, if you if you will just. Spencer, Spencer, stay perfectly still. The visual the visual acuity is based on movement. Oh, thank God, he's here. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. Chris Alpha... Pratt, is that you? Alpha Daisy, Beta Beta Margaret. I only saw the movie once, but easy. They don't like to be talked to that way. The mic cord is wrapped around. The mic cord's uh, visual acuity is based on movement. Easy, raptors. Easy. They're, they're good dinosaurs. Thank you. I know, Jeff, I know you're very passionate about them being used as weapons. I feel like they must be because we're fighting a global war on terror. As long as, as long as you maintain that stance from the beginning of the movie all the way to the end. But, but here's my thing. I, with no arc, no perceivable arc whatsoever. But maybe I just am in three scenes and I just say that three times. I guess, but that's the middle scene. You should be like, hmm, maybe they should be d- d- something, make Sundays. I don't know. But I'm not here to talk about story structure. <laughs> Go on, go on. Raptors, back to your paddock. Uh, Please. That was just as disorganized as that first date we went on. Wait, I have a question. Is is this... Who, somebody's aunt, right? In the movie, there was someone... Yes, yes. The, the most yes, I am an aunt. aunt, and it is the most important relationship you can ever have. Everyone wants to spend time with their aunt, yes. Yes. Uh, but listen, why I was, told... Why wasn't it the mother in that movie? Why, why the aunts in that? Because she had to be hot, and it would have been weird if it was their mom. Okay, all right. <laughs> listen, I'm sorry we went, on, we went on a date. Just thanks for not wearing shorts tonight. I don't know why you uh, did whatever you did. You had a uh, itinerary, or I that's was our backstory. Very organized and very career driven. D- does it does it Which make any sense that we had backstory quality. at all? Why did we go on that date? Isn't that on both of us? Like, if we went on a date, like, why would we see each other and go on a date, and why would we be mad that it didn't work out? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. That's what dates are supposed to do. You're supposed you to go out. You should get mad if you marry someone. Uh, on accident. You shouldn't be mad if you go on a date and someone wears cargo shorts or right. 
<laughs> right, or is, or is too organized. I mean, you, it would make more sense if maybe we had a one-night stand, but it looks like we... We so didn't. We, I mean, we just got sandwiches, We right? just got and sandwiches and then didn't get along, and now we hate each other for some reason. Yeah. But nothing gets everybody hard and wet like hunting dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, dinosaurs just want to do this and then that and then that. You, you, you got to know what one of those is. This is very disorganized for my taste. Uh, Dan? Yes. Uh, can, can we talk a little about about your weapon? Show me this rifle that you have. Uh, I want you to I'm afraid to take it off be- now that I know that police can mistake a towel for a gun. <laughs> uh, it, it, it has the orange tip on it. I, I don't think you're going to get shot. Hey, a towel, tell- a towel, Jeff. Yeah. A towel has no trigger or handle or sights on it. Uh, wait, well, can we? Can, let's have a hand for my okay. wife, Erin McGathy, for. <laughs> Back to your paddock. Back to your paddock. She's going back to her paddock. Wow. Oh. In in heels. She's gonna she's gonna run 45 miles an hour to her paddock. In high heels. Um, also, why you, did you, you want me to? Apparently, you have a knife in the back too. You, you you got a little weapon behind you too. This isn't a knife. This is a n- knife. <laughs> Don't, don't put it by me. I'm going to get shot. You asked me to take it off. Hey, San Diego. Welcome to the Comic-Con. I'm getting out of this shit right away. I'm getting very sweaty. I'm 42, and there's only a certain amount of time I have before my temperature becomes so unregulated that I just fall forward and crush nine people. <laughs> who, would, who would ironically be dressed as Transformers or... Uh, glad to thank you guys for staying. I mean, I think I think we were worried that we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to fill a venue. Uh, Sunday night is usually when people go back. How many of you guys are from San Diego? Yeah. Oh, there's the key. We got a lot of San Diego fans. That's yeah. the key. I thought I, I figured oh, we'd be reliant on on uh, out of towners. Uh, fuck those people. How, fuck these people. Thank God they're gone. How, how many how, fucking nerds dressed as shit? How many Look at that banana show- asshole. <laughs> Fuck you, banana. <laughs> this guy comes here every year. He's from San Jose. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> it's that guy and all the poison ivies. Fuck them. <laughs> a lot of poison ivies everywhere. I, I'm, all, I'm all for it. The, 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 the city chokes on poison ivies every year. <laughs> I, I, I just flew in from Las Vegas, and I, b- before, like, f- from the car door to the hotel front door... I saw nine Lara Crofts. There was a lot of... A lot, oh, really? I, didn't a, a lot, see... I saw all the Tomb Raiders raiding tombs. I th- I th- <laughs> some of the more interesting stuff I saw, I saw steampunk Star Wars guys. Uh, okay, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was a neat... I don't know. I think I, I, get, I get cosplay this year because I, like, I, I think I'm getting my Comic-Con uh, post, post-Harmontown Comic-Con vibe down. I really like coming here, and the, one of the things I like about it is Comic-Con is a time when I can walk down a really crowded city street, and I, like, just every 10 minutes, like, someone goes, Dan Harmon! And it's perfectly timed every time, because it's just as my self-esteem has started to crash. <laughs> uh, ah, 10 more minutes. And it's never, it's never a problem. It's never... Uh, uh, and I just realized if you're like if you're dressed as a banana or a stormtrooper or like uh, Mario or something, because I see people uh, like, you know, they say to each other they go Deadpool, hey Deadpool, and then the Deadpool comes over and they get a picture with him. I'm like, oh, this is what we all come here for. It's like a it's an opportunity to craft, like I, I don't know, it's just it's just a high you get out of people telling you that everyone should experience that. If we lived in a tribe of a hundred people, probably one one hundredth of your day would be filled with people going, hey, Kevin, Tasha, you know, like they would all, I need a shoe, I need a roof on my cottage. But we, and biologically we're designed for that, emotionally we're Nobody designed for Nobody makes roofs like Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a feminist, I believe that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Uh... <laughs> The thanks ladies phase of feminism may be yes. over. Yes. But I'm, I'm 42. I, I think that's where I peek out. Thanks, ladies. 
Um, hey, ladies, and by applause, who's a feminist? Uh, <laughs> it's ladies' uh, night for feminism. <laughs> wear, wear your feminist bracelet, and you can have blowjob shots for free. Uh, okay, so a couple. Let's let's go on our lightning round. Uh, hilarious observations from Dan uh, segment. Okay, I, uh, let's do this shit. Yo, 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 these are little things I put in my Evernote. I just wanted to say them, and I, that's why I wrote them down. Go turn your frown upside down, because it's time for observations. Okay, so you know when you're in any building ever, in a hotel or anything, and every once in a while the three-prong electrical outlet is upside down? The, like, the, the little hole, the little third hole is on top instead of on the bottom. Is that, is that a guy who did it wrong, or is that like the Jackson Pollock of electricians? <laughs> is he like, fuck, this is my fuck. fucking flourish. Wait, like, who's, someone's raising they're, their they're pointing at one guy. This is apparently the guy that does it. <laughs> Certified electrician, get up here! Get up here! <laughs> It's a new segment. It's called Ask a Certified Electrician. We don't have a structure to this show. You thought this was going to be a you thought there was going to be a Seinfeld bit. If Seinfeld was doing this show, Gra- he would mic. have been like, "Fuck it." Grab a mic. Uh, oh yeah, can you, you What's your name, sir? Take Logan. The, take the mic out of the stand and hold it like a human being. Yeah, let's. You're an electrician. You, it, this is the He's whole, not a roadie. I'm also a union electrician, local 569 in San Diego. Yeah. And we all okay. know the Death Star was non-union labor. Oh. Wait, what's not... The Death Star is non-union labor? That's a Kevin Smith reference. I guess... Uh, right? Yeah, sure. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yes, that was the Kevin Smith joke. All right, so... Upside down, prong, uh, upside down three prong outlets. Why? The uh, other two, um, one's a hot, one's a neutral. And if those are actually um, the other way, and you happen to drop your metal piece of something, and it hit those, and you're connected to it, you would hurt yourself. That's why if it's so you're, the other you're way... A, you're a union electrician, but you call it a metal piece of something? Uh, no, no, like, let's say your, um, you know, your metal apron, your metal uh, you know, piece of clothing or some sort of metal thing that happened to hit it, or something you're like reading, I don't know, but I would hit it. So that's why when it actually does hit it, you get hurt. So if it's the ground, which is the little, little point, hits it first because it slides behind the bed or the, the table, you're safer because it hits the ground. And if it hits the neutral and the hot, boom, it makes contact, not the way it should be, and then you'll hurt yourself. Is my brain moving slower, or is there, is there a, you're saying that makes the difference between upside down or right, right side up? Yes, so paper? when you see a, 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 a face that is upside down, right. where it's just the mouth on top, right. and then two uh, eyeballs. That's, the now you're talking top, my language. Mouth on top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Mr. Visual, Bill is upside down. Yeah. Mr. Bill is upside down. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, the, the, the first thing it would hit if it was upside down would be the, the ground. When you, when you say the first thing it would hit, you mean if you're working on the wiring behind the... No, the anything. Anything that might hit it, like an article of uh, metal or, or something. Or like a thumbtack in the wall. How Any, can you hit a hole? I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Let's say you're just having a wild dance party. So, I, well, like your plug is hanging out of the wall such that some of the metal is visible, right? And a thumbtack falls off the wall and topples oh, into if that if it's crevice. not all the way plugged in. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> okay, so upside down is the fucking actual Zorro way to do it. It's like... It it's, is the, the code way because it's the safest <gasps> way. All the, oh. the right all side up plug And all union electricians know that. Oh, my God. Thank you, electrician. He's a union electrician. <laughs> Put them upside down, you pieces of shit. What was his name? What was your name? Logan. Logan. <laughs> fake name, fake name. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, okay, more, more random. We're, we're, we've already gotten more shit done in, in, in Harmontown than we ever have. 
<laughs> it's San Diego. It's a port town. In L.A., you're just, you're just playing to a crowd of people that are like, mm, I hope Spielberg l- orders lunch soon. Um, or I'm out of a job. Uh, the, the, these, the, some of these people's parents haul fish, Jeff. All right. They, they skin dolphins here. This is a, this is a, this is a labor town. I gotta get, get that orca into his paddock. Or, or my children won't eat. All right, so there's electricians here. We, don't, we get them from San Diego. Movie skeletons. I asked my chiropractor. He said, does your back feel better? I said, I guess. And then I was leaving, and he goes like, hey, any more questions you have for me? And I said, yes. In the movies, when you find a skeleton, they wouldn't stay together, would they? Like when you find a pirate and he's like holding a fucking sack of gold and he's got a hat on and a trench coat. Like, that's not real. And he's like, well, they're held together by ligaments. And I'm like, and they would. And he's like, they would rot. And I'm like, so Goonies is a piece of shit. (laughs) You can't have fucking skeletons in the midst of like steering a ship. That shit wouldn't happen. Wait, so you're not, you don't have a problem with a skeleton being alive just that it's together? Well, I'm assuming if you're allowing for magic, then you're allowing that they could just be like, I don't know, if brooms can fight Mickey Mouse, then a skeleton can hang out, I guess. But, but when you find a skeleton, yeah, and it's on, like... On the, on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, when, you, when you're in line, there's that pirate that's like leaning up against a wall with a sword through his chest. He, he, he would just be a pile of... Yeah, it's bombs. not like Hiro, Hiroshima, where it's like, oh, there was a kid throwing a ball in the air, or, or like, too soon? They're not saying boo, they're saying goonies. <laughs> or, or, okay, okay, guys, Pompeii. Is that, is that cool enough? All right, you guys over Pompeii? <laughs> but, uh, when, it's like, when it's like, this was a rich man getting held up by a beggar, like, you know, getting a museum. It's like, that, okay, I guess the ash fell that fast. But if you, unless you, if you laid down <laughs> and were so like, I'm going to die, I'm going to be a skeleton when they find me. I'm going to lay down. You'd have to lay all the way down and then just like make sure there was no air in the room. And like, and you slowly rot. Like 6,000 years later, you'd be a skeleton. But the, the minute somebody was like, look, it's a skeleton, if they touched your arm, you couldn't like lift you up like a puppet. Your arm would make all of the, it would fall down like a house of cards. All right. All right. So I'm glad I could. Thank We're getting you. so much done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Screenwriters. I know there's 90 of you in the room right now. Because, because the software does the formatting work, so now everyone's a fucking screenwriter. Uh, I'm going to take a page out of your uh, script. Uh, everything happens suddenly. Dumb fucks. Stop telling... Everything happens suddenly. If a car explodes gradually, let me know! Otherwise, I imagine it suddenly. I know it's a, a car explodes. You're done. Move on. Save a word, Frazier. I didn't picture, I'm not going to picture the car slowly turning orange and then blossoming into a dismantled car over the period of six months. Have you never said suddenly in a script, even in the early days? When I was uh, dumb and then I grew. <laughs> That's why I'm angry. It's called bullying. Okay. <laughs> Pedicabs. Hey, could we have a more uncomfortable on the nose uh, manifestation of the class system? Okay. <laughs> I can't fucking, I'm so lazy. I can't do it. I got to keep using them. And I'm just sitting back there. Could you feel more ancient and more Roman than when you're riding in one of these things and there's just a guy? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. One more. No, uh, uh, 10 more. Okay, uh, this, has been, this has been a long time coming. I saved it for tonight. Why would you have a favorite color? <laughs> I agree. What does that mean? It's stupid. Stupid. Why would you have a favorite color? That doesn't mean anything. Does that mean you want everything to be that color? Then you're using color wrong. That's like having a favorite musical note. Or hurt, 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 hurt. That's a, that you wouldn't be a musician. You'd design car alarms. Or, or, 
people say, what, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? I said, no, I like ice cream. Like, I fucking... I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll motherfucker, I'll, put a hot dog in it on Monday, <laughs> and then put some pretzels in it on Tuesday. I don't want a hot dog in my ice cream. <laughs> yeah, you do. No. We're going to prove like it I, by the it, end of the day. You night. don't like ice cream. We just found that out. <laughs> you you got to put a hot dog in it on a Monday? I like ice cream. Hiroshima! <laughs> <laughs> It, we did Hiroshima, though, right? That, that, yeah, that was our fault. That's like a... I, I can't come up with a non-offensive example, so I won't. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Spencer, all right. You're Harry Truman. You're the newly elect president. Uh, it's the end of World War II. Do you drop the atomic bomb, the newly created atomic bomb to end the war and save lives, or do you not do it? Make your answer thoughtful enough that I can make a drink. Okay, so, I mean, what did Harry Truman do besides that? Anything? Not a whole lot. He, he, he wasn't in office very long, I don't think. Well... Warsaw Say what? The Warsaw Pact. Warsaw Pact. Yeah. Thank you, sir. The Warsaw Pact. He beat Dewey. He, he, he did beat Dewey, but <laughs> not, not according to one newspaper. So, this is coming off the heels of the Warsaw Pact. <laughs> yeah, he, he's riding high on that. Yeah. He's got that Warsaw Pact cachet. All right. <laughs> Dan's now, good. Your, your, your Secretary of uh, Defense and War and all those people come in and say, all right, Mr. President, we have this new weapon. We're going to drop it, or, or we, we won't. Uh, do, do we do it to save American lives and kill a zillion people instantly, or do we not do that? Morality-wise, do we do it to scare off the Nazis and, and, and uh, the rest of the world, the, the, uh, the Soviets who are our current allies, maybe our next enemy? What do, what do you do? You're, you're, our, you're President Spencer Crittenden. Drop the fucking hammer! But you know that was not about protecting ourselves from the Japanese. Like, we had won that war. Like, that was about an excuse. It was about, making them, it was about making them surrender when they, they were no, going to lose. No, it was about revealing... Let's bring own. Logan back up. Logan, get back up here. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. It was, <laughs> it was obviously about revealing in our game of Hearthstone that we had the fucking mushroom cloud well, card. It was, yeah. Like most a, actions have multiple reasons, sure. But that but, was the reason. The Japanese were yeah. defeated. Defeated. Yeah, like, but they weren't giving up. That was the thing. They were defeated, but they weren't giving up. And they needed, are, okay. check it out, half your city, two of your cities are gone, fucking give up. But we were, we were showing that to the world. That the, was yeah, the you're, both of us are right. How about that? Yeah, yeah we're both right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, talk about, well, the, the, the real quandary is Nagasaki. Like, why the second one? The answer in our history books when we were kids. You mean down in Nagasaki, where the men are chuchibaki and the women are wiki wacky woo? <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Nagasaki, we dropped the bomb right away on them, and that was, in history, what we learned in American uh, grade schools is the reason we did that is because, <laughs> and this sounds, this could either be true or not true, but it just sounds so sixth grade. Like, we had to drop the bomb on Nagasaki because otherwise they would have thought we only were able to make one. <laughs> That's the only reason that I know of. That's the only reason that I learned. There's like, I mean, the, they, those pilots have written memoirs and books and shit. There might be some crazy drama surrounding the second bomb, man. Good chance. Well, the the second one, uh, it missed. It, it flew over a hill. It, 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 didn't, it didn't take out as much as the town as they hoped it would. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, so they, they wanted to bomb somewhere else, right? Yeah, but the, yeah. The, the weather was bad that day, right? Yeah. yeah. The weather was bad for bombing. Uh, that's, okay. that, that's my main problem with Japan is it's usually terrible bombing work. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of military strategy, this was a historic Comic Con. They had drones down on the deck that were like shaped like the the Doctor Who TARDIS, and yes. they were they were flying them up in the air, and the fucking Air Force came in and shut it down. What? Yeah. Because, because that's what I heard. I wasn't there. Were they jealous? They're like, are you jealous? Make, make, a, make, make a rectangle, hexagonal pair of, like, I think we're just so flying. close to I mean, this is a military base. San Diego is a military base. There's an enormous uh, and aircraft a frozen carrier yogurt shop. Like, uh, out, in the, out in the harbor. Right There's now. a couple. Uh, Logan, what's the name of the aircraft carrier? Midway, Midway. That wasn't Logan, but thank you, sir. I don't know any more details than that. So it's, 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 it's the Reagan class? The Reagan and Nimitz class. Oh, Nimitz class. Holy shit. Anyways, they had to put a net around where they were demonstrating the drones because now everyone can have a drone now, and so they were like, "You, you, but you can't have a drone. You're, you're, 
you could wage war on America now with your Doctor it, Who TARDIS. <laughs> They got nervous. They know shit we don't about drone warfare then. Because I don't think anyone out there was thinking, boy, if we put a bomb on this, if we put an ISIS guy on there, uh, and they were thinking the, that. They're if, like, if, if there was put, an ISIS guy on there. If you put a guy on the drone, it's not a drone anymore. It's just a plane. <laughs> not if he's not flying it, though, right? Say what? Not if he's not flying Yeah, what if he's like the bomb? Is it still a drone if he's just hanging he's just out? just laying back? Yeah. If Minecraft. he's taking a nap, it's a drone. <laughs> and he's on a drone. I've seen Minecraft drones that look like ghasts. No one gets it. We all get it. I mean, it's not a joke, really, so. Yeah. Right reaction. Uh, okay. Also yeah. right reaction. I want to know more about this guy wearing the banana outfit. Uh, I, mean, I don't or, know or if do we, we do. <laughs> I don't, we don't, we don't want to know. Well, he's dressed like a banana. I mean... No, he's po- he just pointed at himself like me. <laughs> I. <laughs> oh no, okay. Okay, no, okay fuck it. Get out of here, banana around. guy. <laughs> banana gentleman. What's your name? Victor. I should have known. Take that mic, banana guy. What's I, your name? Victor. Victor. Uh, why a banana? Why not? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> All right, San Diego. <laughs> All right. Victor, uh, what, what is your greatest fear in life? What, what's your, what's the, the motivating fear in your life? When you wake up, if you have a, ba- a bad dream, what, what's the thing that is like the most terrifying possibility for a gentleman that wears a banana outfit? Well, I'm in character right now, so uh, someone eating me. No, 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 but for real. Just Victor, not, not banana guy. Victor. Not knowing what to say. <laughs> really? Yes. But what's the worst that could happen if you didn't know what to say? People stare at me. So as a, but now we tie it back into you dressing like a banana. Because <laughs> your biggest indirect fear is people staring at you. No, but I get it because then when you're, if you dress like a banana, people will stare at you and you don't have to say anything. You've said it all. I'm I a banana. Dance. And you're, so your fear, like Barack Obama doesn't dress like a banana. He becomes president. Like you're like, Look at me, I'm a banana. That, that goes to my thesis earlier, that people go like, hey, Deadpool, can I get a picture? And you're like, I feel like I'm somebody. I get that, I get it. Like, my banana costume is like having a feud with Chevy Chase and uh, like, <laughs> like, whatever it takes to, I get it. Because I get the feeling of like, oh, I have an identity now and I, 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 do, I don't disparage it at all. Uh, what, um, uh, how, where are you at on the Kinsey scale, do you think? <laughs> If you go, if if a hundred percent is like just totally straight well, as an arrow. it's one to six, right? One to seven. Oh, is it one to six? Uh, one to six. One being straightest. I see. What is the what is the scale? I think one is one is straightest and six is like. Well, we could gayest? we could go by hypotheticals. Like if another dude dressed as a banana came in, and he looked like uh, Ewan McGregor. Well, that's not even that's that's a that's a. You'd hit that. Yeah, totally. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, that's that's a good enough. It's at least a three. <laughs> is he is he really dressed like a banana? Yeah, of course he's dressed like a then banana. We can just split and get out of here. That'd be cool. Uh, oh, you guys like you guys like wordplay. There okay. there are three banana puns in the world, and that's one of them. What's what's the second one? I can't. I'm going bananas. Gr- you're doing it for the group appeal. <laughs> Victor the banana, everybody. Victor the banana. Banana Man! It's a banana. All right. We, we met a banana tonight. All right, question for you. Yeah? There's this movie, uh, James Franco and Jonah Hill are in it. It's called True Story. Uh, it's on all the hotel TVs right now. Right. I didn't really notice it and in the on, theaters. On all the hotel TVs? Yeah, right. everyone. So it's like about a, it's like about a murderer and it's a, based on a true story and it's called true story and it's like it's a serious movie. Do you think that do you think that Jonah Hill's agent and James Franco's agent both separately were like, dude, you gotta do you gotta do another serious one. Like you've been silly for like five movies in a row. Like let's show them let's show them your Moneyball chops or your uh, guy with the arm behind a rock chops. <laughs> And then they both, do you think they both separately were like, okay, yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pay some dues. Let's, let's show them some drama shit. Let's get an Oscar. And then they walked into a set and they're like, what the fuck? 
when they saw each other, like, no one's gonna take this movie seriously. Like, you gotta put Moneyball with like a dramatic actor and vice versa. You can't, yeah, like, they look ridiculous together and it's a terrible movie. Okay, let's move on. So I saw a three-legged dog walking down the streets of oh, San Diego. I think I, I saw I that dog. Joke. I love this joke. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a joke. There was a dog with three legs. With the missing it goes leg into a was bar. The, the missing leg was uh, uh, in the back, and uh, I was watching it. And the you can't tell when dogs. So the fact that a dog could have three legs and and not show it on its face kind of makes me panic about how well I'm taking care of my dog because like my dog always looks happy and so did this dog <laughs> and he's he's one quarter down like, like, like of, of the fundamental economy of dogness like he's he's totally fucked as a dog and he was like yeah what's going on anybody got some bacon um the but and, and but the thing that was really distracting me was like assuming that's a male dog because I think female dogs kind of squat so does Harvey. Did you know, do you know this, that, that male dogs learn to lift a leg from each other? It's like a learned behavior? No. Male dogs, if they're left in a vacuum, they'll, they'll squat uh, and, and just pee down. Where's but, Harvey on the Kinsey scale? I don't know. He's, but anyways, so I was like, assuming that's a male dog... What does he do when he pees? Because he's half of his back legs are gone. Yeah, he, he, if he lifts one, he falls right over. So then, right as I said that, he's stopped by a telephone pole, and it's like the answer was right in front of me. This dog, the one great thing about his life is there's no leg to lift. Yeah. He he just stopped next to a telephone pole and shot a fucking laser <laughs> to the side. He doesn't have to do anything. He has like he has like. Fast and Furious seven turrets that come out of this. He just shoots sideways. Anyways, okay, so it's a San Diego Comic Con uh, podcast, and you're getting a lot of fast and uh, bits. Okay, okay, all right. You ever seen a commercial like a Mountain Dew commercial or a Chip commercial where a kid like rides a bike? Uh, up a ramp and then he f does a somersault on the bike and then the whole bike and him go into the ocean. Where does the bike go? What does he do with the? You just is, the, is there a bunch of bikes down there? Do you is it does he have to swim with the bike like he's rescuing it? What a dumb thing to do! Dangerous and stupid. Are, are you worried about the bikes or, or, or about the I'm worried about I the, the I'm, ecology? I think I'm worried about the earth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think once we solve all our other problems, we're going to have to deal with this mountain if, of bikes. If, if anybody had the time or the energy, go to Huntington Beach, California, where I spent most of my time ditching high school. And uh, most of my wallets are there. I, 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 about 20 yards out. <laughs> I, I kept going into, into the water with a wallet in my pocket, and you come out with no wallet. They're all there. You think there's pickpockets down there? It's those fish, man. <laughs> Oh, Those your wallets groupers. are out. Do they just fall out? Yeah, it was in a pocket. Okay, how do you feel about the Bloody Mary arms race? <laughs> about putting shit in the Bloody yeah. Marys? I feel... I, I, you start, I'll fucking follow up. Well, I, I, mean, I feel very strongly about in it. In Portland, they, they, you order a Bloody Mary... And, and it comes with a sandwich on it and the whole yeah. thing, yeah. No. <laughs> like, everybody's in this arms race. As a Bloody Mary should be a small thing. It shouldn't be a giant... And I know there's bartenders here, and I don't want you guys to be offended. Uh, it should not be in a pint glass with ice and, and a bunch of shit in it. It should be a small highball glass. It should be chilled with a lemon, and that's it. That's, it you, right? Was that Logan? Who is that? It, it, should, it, it, should be, it should be a restorative drink that you, that you drink that one to get your shit back together so you can start drinking booze again, like a real drink. You shouldn't have a 19-ounce fucking Bloody Mary with a cheeseburger on it. That's like, there's places terrible. with a turkey leg dipped no, in it, and then there's, like, two crazy. snorkels coming out. And also, if you, if, you, if you tell a bartender, I just want it chilled up in a glass with a lemon, they look at you like you're fucking crazy, that you, that you don't want 19 things hanging off the side of it. Yeah. It'll fucking kill everybody. All right. <laughs> Final beverage question. This ends my segment. So, <laughs> all right. Our shows a segment. A lot of these kids out here, they're younger than us, but they went to schools, and they, I just want to ask, I just got very curious about this because I was remembering my cafeteria days. Have they made these uh, half-pint milk cartons easier to fucking open yet, or do you still have to... It's like 
25% of them you have to rip open like Wolverine like, like to get in the like you look like a fucking asshole and why why do why do the jocks always know how to do it better and what are, what are we doing wrong and uh, it's just is it still that it's just a bunch of glue and paper and you just have to like t take the luck of the draw yeah okay just checking no the, yeah, the, why the, would they change that who's going to profit from that they put water on cartons. Are, are they easier to open or is it the same? Yeah. They make yeah, you drink it's, it's water a, out of a, of a half pint carton? It's uh, better for the earth. <laughs> what Thank a, you. What about water fountains? That's worse for the earth? Uh, plastic bottles. Oh, They're, but but I mean, what about the wa water fountains? <laughs> they never served me water uh, in the cafeteria. I don't know what conversation this is. I don't. <laughs> they never served you water? At the cafeteria? Yeah. No, they did not. No. So why are they putting water in half pint cardboard? To cart save the earth. To not use From plastic. From what? From, From plastic. They use. don't give you plastic bottles in the cafeteria. They do. They, okay, they do now. Well, that's their problem. They should stop doing that. Oh. They don't have to. Are, they, are we only talking about in the schools? Because yes. I've, I feel like I've seen them in stores. You know, like bigger ones. Yeah, right, bigger. Yes, that I get. I'm so, talking about in school. Cafeteria, you get okay. your mock chicken leg and your green beans and your ketchup. Wait, the kids' ones are the easiest to open out of any carton. The kids, it's the those kids. Minute Maid ones from Jack in the Box that are the real problem. <laughs> That's the real problem. Let me tell you. Also, ivory poachers. <laughs> Okay, I want to bring up a guy that I met at a signing, because um, he came, I hope he's here. He came up, and uh, he, he was getting his Rick and Morty stuff signed, and then he asked Justin and I, Justin and me, Justin and you. Uh, Justin he, and we. <laughs> he got the signature, and then he said, by the way, uh, what, what are each of your guys' favorite Tom Petty songs? <laughs> And, and Justin answered, and then I said, I, don't, I guess Free Fallen? I, I don't know. Which Dino told me today was the wrong answer, but it's, it's just like, but at any rate, he just, he took the two answers, and then he was like, okay, thanks. And started to walk away, and I was like, get back here. <laughs> Why? You don't get to ask me that. Yeah. And, and he said, oh, I'm just really into Tom Petty, and I really, I, I, I just, I always ask, I always ask everybody that. And, and I was like, can you please come, are you coming to the show, and will you please come up and you know, uh, being passionate about something so specific, like I just like to meet these people. Is Robert here? Robert, are you here? No? No. Nope. Uh, oh, he shot his family. Okay. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't come? He turned Free Fallen <laughs> up to 11. And, Get him free! <laughs> free Fall! <laughs> I'm running down a dream bank. <laughs> Don't come around here no wait, more. So, so, wait, did you invite him to the show and he didn't fucking come? He said he was going to be at the show. I wouldn't invite him to the show. These people went through hell and back to, to get, get into the show. Uh, but I, I thought he was going to be here. I, I, was, uh, I went to go see the, the, the Jeff Lynn documentary called uh, Mr. Blue Sky, which is great. And I was standing at the, um, uh, Nokia Live, like a small theater, and I was standing in a little corridor, and it was a, we were so rammed in together. I, was a, a short guy next to me with a hat, and I couldn't see his face because he was shorter than me. He had a big hat, he had Gandalf hair, and he was smoking um, early days vape pen, but it was clearly like weed. And, and he's like, hey, man, you, you want some? I was like, what is it, marijuana? He goes, yeah. I go, no, that'll get me too, that'll get me too high. I, I get too high on marijuana. I go, hash I can do. He goes, oh, shit, if you know anyone that has any hash, oh, fuck, you know, I want that hash oil, man. I couldn't see his face. He had a big brim hat. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, is, he's, not, he's, he's American, so he's not in ELO. Who the fuck is this guy? He sits down in front of me. It's fucking uh, Tom Petty. <laughs> I was like, I was so happy I didn't know that it was Tom Petty because I would never have been that glib and like, like chatty with him. I, I would have been freaking out the whole time. He just wanted to be like, yeah, if you can score some hash oil, man, let's fucking do that shit. <laughs> What if he just kept bugging you for the rest of your life? He's like, hey, it's Tom. <laughs> hey, I, I found thought we some had hash oil. We had an agreement. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I picked wrong with Free Fall, and I don't know, because Dino was going like, that's the wrong song. I was like, what would you pick? And he's like, I can't remember what he said. but I, Oh, he said, I won't back down. I'm like, well, yeah. 
That's just whining. Also, isn't isn't there a bit, isn't there a bit where like like most of uh, Tom Petty's songs has the word down in the title? Like, there's, there's like a, a lot of them. I was running down a dream. I won't back down. I think there's a bunch more. But I do, the only part of free falling I like is the when he actually literally says, "And I'm free, free falling," because the rest of the song is like bad mountain goats, kind of like over specific geographic <laughs> stuff. And it's like I'm on I'm on First Street eating a pretzel. <laughs> There's a goat leash and a shoe on my foot. Like, like, like that's, that's like an old singer thing. Free. Like, they run out of chops and then they just start fucking grinding at specificity. They're like, I'm on third and Wabash and 2252 Reseda. Like, like, like I, I, I know that's something old people do. Uh, there's some plywood and it costs three ninety nine a pound at Home Depot on Ventura Boulevard. Like, <laughs> Whenever you're, whenever you're getting geographically specific, you're, you're blying some fucking, like, because young kids, like, like, we love music by 22-year-olds that are, and you listen to the lyrics of the songs we love, and they're just like, I won't let you down. I love you so much. And we're like, you're adorable, and this is awesome, and I'm going to have sex to this song. Uh, but they're, they're, not, they're not poets. <laughs> it doesn't, and they don't have to be because they're young. But old people are just like, like uh, September 3rd, <laughs> the day after Mother's Day. <laughs> the, the barometric pressure was 72%. I get into my Chevy 57 Impala. Like, stop telling me all this shit. Like, get your shit out of my fucking brain. Just, just tell me what it feels to be alive. You don't know, do you? You don't know. You just have memories of random that, shit. That's, 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 that's what Alzheimer's patients I do. I, oh, I remember a fuzzy slipper. Mom, go to bed. <laughs> do you want to have sex? I'm your son. Go to bed. <laughs> but, the, but, but Howard Hughes is about to sing Linky Doodle. That's, you're wrong. That's, that's, that's George Gershwin. But you're, you're, you're saying you agree with Dino. You picked the wrong song. You picked the one that's all specific. Because I like the part that's like, free, <laughs> free falling. Because Tom Petty's whiny, and so if you're going to whine about something, whine about being free. Him saying, I won't back down, is kind of like, you just sound stubborn. <laughs> Johnny Cash singing, I won't back down, sounds badass. I won't back down. Like, oh, oh shit, this guy's going to stop apartheid or something. <laughs> he, he won't back down from fucking, from the Third Reich. Like, like that sounds badass. Tom Petty sounds like, I, when he said to me, I won't back down, it, it sounds like he didn't get the right kind of mustard or something. <laughs> hey, I want a refund. I'm not leaving here without my money back. I won't back down. I'm putting my foot down because I'm a consumer watchdog. And I won't back down. And if you go onto my Tumblr blog, you can see the other companies I've written to. <laughs> I won't shop at Fry's, baby. How Their customer feel? service is rude. How do you feel about Bob Dylan? Are you a Bob, Bob Dylan fan? Uh, I, I guess I missed out on that. I, I, I'm sure he was very ironic and interesting when in the in 1928. Yeah, that, that was his early stuff. That was his, certainly his very early stuff. I, I get, I get it. I mean, I guess Easy Rider's a good movie. I don't know. No, I'm saying, I'm comparing the two. I'm not saying Bob Dylan was an easy rider. But I'm saying, like, there's shit that you miss the boat on and you kind of historically look and go, oh, okay, I, I, I understand the significance. What's your guilty pleasure at home? Like, uh, your, your music, if you're, like, if you're alone and want to wallow, like, in, like, I'm assuming, like, you and I, I think we both have talked about this before. We, we like sad songs. Yeah. Who, who's your uh, guilty yeah, pleasure? I've, I've listened to dream pop and, like, uh, I mean, I, and now I listen to, like, shit that I, to me is modern, but then Aaron goes, that's from 2006. I listened to that in grade school. And, uh, <laughs> like I'm, How old is she? I'm really into the postal service or whatever. And I'm, like, I'm like, man, I, just, I, I hope my wife overhears this. She's going to get turned on. I'm very young and hip. And she's like, that's what? That, the uh, Beetlejuice was in theaters. Like, I, why are you... <laughs> Uh, but I, yeah, I don't know. I like I like moody. Sad. Spencer, how about you? Do you have a, what, what's your go-to? Are, are you, a, when you when you're at home? Do you play music? Uh, no. I mean, I when I'm driving around, I listen to either NPR, which is a uh, yeah, 
They do they, they do music too, so it's not just that. That's and the, then I also think this, this uh, has to be the first show where people have screamed and wooted for NPR. I doubt that, man. NPR is great. Have you heard <laughs> I I heard a piece on NPR. I don't know if this is true. I don't know how scientifically accurate it's this is, true. but supposedly the morning is becoming less and less eclectic. No. Uh, yeah. Is it? It's by by like That's by like sad. six inches a year. No it's, shit. Yeah, by by, it, by 2019, change? the morning won't be eclectic. <laughs> it's true. It's it's thanks to Chris Doritas. You guys don't listen to Morning Becomes Eclectic this week. <laughs> You'd uh, know he's sitting in for Jason Bentley. They don't get up that early. See, they, they, they get they, Jay, they know the who seals. Jason Bentley is. Uh, well, these guys do. Dan, if if, if you could be a in a band, like a big rock band, like a major thing. Would you be lead singer, guitar, drums, bass, laying in the background, keyboard, yeah. b- uh, background singer maybe, like uh, you b- background vocals? What would you be if you could be in a huge band? Well, I, d- are we in this hypothetical universe? Just my, my talent knows no bounds and also like... You, you could be <laughs> as good or as bad as you want well, to be. Well, I'd be the lead singer. Okay. And so, and so would every bass player. Is it... <laughs> I if they like, if they could, no, no, I, I, I feel like there are people. <laughs> Otherwise, that, why are they on stage? That be, they, I wish I was singing. I know, bum, I know bum, people, bum, th- Their personalities. They would rather be slightly. I don't believe in, that's in true sh- at all. <laughs> they, uh, rock, rock bands are like five people. Like, like uh, if you uh, show me the uh, second chair violinist, the L.A. Philharmonic, I'll believe that she doesn't wish that she was First, David Lee Roth. Or, or she, she, I don't believe that Dave Grohl didn't wish he was Kirk. Hot not too soon. It's fucking right on time. <laughs> I don't believe it. I think rock bands are, are are the reason they're fun to watch is because there's a five dudes who all hate but each I, other and wish that I, they. I, I know musicians that are happy. Like, like they're they're happy. It's like like I want to be on stage, but I, I would never want the onus of being the front man, a, a front woman. Like, but I, why is it an onus if you're so good? I think That's I, why I asked, am I so good that I don't have to worry about shit? Then yeah, I'll take all the attention. Like, like Ke- Keanu Reeves told me we were very drunk in Vegas one time. He's like... Uh, Holy crap. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, his favorite thing is playing bass. He, he, he likes playing bass and not... He, he doesn't charm the crowd. He doesn't rock out. He just hangs his head down. This, this is back in the Dog Star days, which is a long time ago. And he, and he goes, he's like, Jeff, being in a band is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Like, he'd I rather do that better. than be a movie star. If he, if he had his way, he would be second fiddle, hair in his face, and no one knew but that. But that's not, that doesn't mean that if God came down with a magic wand and touched his throat and made him sound like Frank Sinatra, he wouldn't be like, I still just want to play bass. <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd be I like, okay, I, oh, shit, I guess I'm the but best but, at this. But, 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 <laughs> A lot of drummers that I know don't want to be up, up front. They but are they drum. good singers? Huh? Are they good singers? No, they want to drum. They want to do that. I know, but if they could... Look at Phil Collins. He's croaking there, out shit while he's drumming. Hang he's on. like, ah! Uh, by applause, are there musicians here that, that don't want to be a lead singer and would rather be doing else? You're, you're, just, you're, just, you're, just, you're just getting lies. <laughs> like, like, it's you not, called all those people liars. Just you're, like, it's not, it's not, there's a difference between asking people... If you if you could be a li- uh, like the at the spotlight, would you take it? And asking them, are you very happy to to take a backseat? Like when I was working, I think on, there are people that don't want the spotlight a, 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 under any circumstances. This is this is I, I, I you're taking a position that's hard, very hard to disagree with without being uncharismatic because I'm taking the elitist <laughs> position. What, but I will say when I like 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 in support of your point. When I was working on the <clears throat> the uh, 81st Oscars, which I guess I probably <laughs> like, I was you know Jack Black called me down because he wanted me to write his patter, and he was presenting with Jennifer Aniston, and I and I, I had a headset on and a little clipboard, and it was like, oh boy, I gotta go down and see Mrs. Aniston and Mr. Black, and uh, and 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 they're like, I wrote a joke for them, and then they were like, they didn't like the joke, and I had to rewrite it, and. 
I was very, in that moment, I was like very activated. I liked it. And if you, had, if you had stuck a thermometer in me at that point and asked, are you miserable? Do you hate them? Do you wish you were presenting at the Oscars? I wouldn't have said yes. I, I was happy in my position. I felt supportive. I felt activated. I felt content. That's different from saying, would you switch places with Jennifer Aniston? Which I would. <laughs> What's the first thing you would do if you, if you were suddenly Jennifer Aniston? Oh, like, so much. I would start by making healthcare socialized. Why do you think she hasn't already done that? Yeah, I'm sure she has in her little neck of the woods, but like, I would use her power for good. <laughs> I don't know. This conversation is dumb. Uh, <clears throat> no, but, I mean, I, I would suspect that you and I would both want to be lead singers, but there are people that would rather play drums and rather be, hey, right? Hey, this guy. This guy? <laughs> Logan. <laughs> Fucking Logan. I'm not, I mean, I feel like, I feel like, I, I mean, it's a very uncharismatic for, thing for me to say that if you are a bass player, you must wish you were a singer. It's different from saying, I don't think that's, it's semantics. Like, our language doesn't have the nuance to, to divide those lines. I'm just saying, like, if you like being on stage and you like playing an instrument and you like performing for people in a concert, if a, if a fairy godmother like touch, would be able to transform you into a person who could had p- perfect pitch and amazing dance moves or, or beautiful hair or whatever it is that, was, that, 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 that makes you feel like you don't belong in, at the very front of the performance, would you then do it? I mean, what, and, and, and at a certain point, aren't you actually kind of, I mean, l- l- being dishonest if you'd say no. You're like, no, I want to stand behind a, 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 a lead singer and, and have everyone pointing at me and going, let the bass player sing. <laughs> like, like, well, I, like, I think that would come down to more just personalities, like, like your own thing. Like, like, let's say you had a great head of hair and, and a great voice and everything, and you still say, no, I would still like to be a role player, like like be, be the bass player, be the drummer, be the, be the uh, cello, play a second uh, uh, violin. Like people. But I think when you're in a band, like you had said before, you should always surround yourself by people that intimidate you. So if you are in a band and you're not like, and the guy that's actually the lead singer, if he's not a guy that you are like, man, I wish I could sing like that, then you're not in the right band. Right. Like you, 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 if you, if you're like this kid. He sings like shit, but I'll let him. Like you're in the wrong band. You're actually being an asshole by not by not quitting that band and going and finding a band where the lead singer is like, is like, holy shit, this guy's a, this guy's a star. So that that if you extend that train of thought, it's like, so if you magically like, if you had those proclivities instead of your bass player proclivities, would you? What, what position of the band would you play? It's almost like a non-question. Because it's just sort of like we all, what we want is an identity. We want to be the guy dressed as Deadpool. We want to be the guy that fired, got fired by NBC. We want to be the, 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 the Mario guy, the guy dressed as a banana. We want, we want to have a role. Tasha wants to build her roofs. Uh, like you, you, the all you want is a function is, and to know that you are, you're, that you're nailing it, that you're doing the most you can and that if you're not succeeding as much as you can, that you're still trying and getting better. Everyone wants to feel that way but all I, the time. But I, I don't think Keith Moon wanted to be Roger Daltrey. I think Keith Moon liked being Keith Moon. Or, you're, I mean, or you're maybe just, he didn't. You know, you're like. just using examples that are... Yeah. I mean, you're, you're but there's also like a garage band that's just doing it for fun who's never going to you know, want to do actual shows. There's a couple bands like that, right? There's like three, I think. Three. I don't want to be Dan. <laughs> I, I, I know, just without, trying to go, without trying to goad the crowd, I know there are musicians here that would be, would be happily never the lead singer for very so We're good talking reasons. in circles. Yeah. I already, I've circumscribed this whole thing and I'm smarter than everyone in the world. <laughs> like, I, I, I encompass the you way, the way everyone here feels, I already feel that way, and more. <laughs> That's the bottom line. I feel everything. I know what it's like to be black. It's hard, but cool. That track. Salty and a little Wait. sweet. All right, Dan, Dan, okay, let, let's say that you were in the Philharmonic, like in a big orchestra. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, okay. Where it's not about like 
first chair, second. You, 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 can, you can be first chair anything you want. What instrument would you play if you could Tuba. Play <laughs> Tuba? Yeah. Tuba or sousaphone? No, fuck you guys. <laughs> For real? Straight tuba? up tuba. Proper tuba. Yep. Tuba snap. <laughs> so yeah, because you, then you're in and out. Are you? Because how many songs have like a tuba solo? You, you just show up and you're like, just be the best tuba, but tuba player. Tuba is like the bass player of the band. It's a, it's a bass instrument. Yeah, so we're, we're talking in circles here. Like, I... I, I you like, you want to be a bass there's player. There's no lead singer in a symphony. There is I, I, no... That's what I'm asking. I, there's I, no superstar. No, you answered my question. I was like, you, you, would, you would like to play a kind of not, not upfront instrument. Like a it's bar. a specific, like, yeah. flavor, because I would want to stand out. Hope, 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 because, like, if you were, like, the best violinist in the world, then you're, you know, your friend comes to see the concert, and you get off stage, and they're like, good, good job. And you're like, how do you know, you dick? There's, like, eight violinists up there. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, my, my, I don't have a favorite color, you asshole. <laughs> what are your top three? Top three. Uh, orange. <laughs> All right. people, people love orange. Baby blue. <laughs> Hiroshima. And AIDS yellow. <laughs> because fuck the queen. <laughs> Do you think I was just going to pander? AIDS yellow. The color of AIDS. I went to Home Depot recently. It's hard to get a good AIDS yellow. <laughs> Sean dis AIDS. The color of your AIDS. Uh, statistically speaking, anyone with AIDS here tonight? Of course, of course, yes. Uh, too soon. Um, banana guy. The, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the his banana is AIDS yellow. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, banana guy's got AIDS. <laughs> Victor, so, do you have AIDS? It, no, okay, he, yeah, he's clear, he's good. All right, so the, one of the things I like to do when I come to Comic-Con is hang out with my old, very, very, very old friend, as old as the hills, who is always here with a little flower on his head selling his little, his little trade paperbacks from his Canadian cartoon, Bob are, the Angry are you Flower. Are one of my favorite people in the world? Yeah. Stephen Notley is Stephen here. Stephen Notley, bring him up Bob the Angry him. Flower. Are you going to come up, Steve? You don't have to. I love this guy. Hello, Stephen. How are you, man? I'm okay. I thought you were kidding when you said you were going to do this. Do what? You didn't say it. I, I, I thought you were kidding. Oh. All right. If you, Holding if you, it. If you don't know Stephen Notley, he, he writes uh, a hilarious and poignant and trenchant little uh, comic strip in, in ink and paper. Uh, I use two of those words when I'm pitching. Is that right? I don't say poignant. But trenchant. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe salient? I do say salient. Uh, he, it's called Bob the Angry Flower, and it's, 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 it's great commentary, and it's quite wonderfully drawn. <laughs> And it expresses all of your uh, impotent rage and, and, and righteous indignation. That's very cool. Yeah, you're one of my oldest and nerdiest friends. If you if you <laughs> if you combine the old and the nerdy, like you're definitely like in the, into one scale. That's definitely your top of the list. Oh, if you sort by kind. nerdy and oldie. Do you remember when you were sitting in my one bedroom apartment while I was writing Monster House, and for some reason I had cocaine, and we were like trying cocaine and like. <laughs> I was writing Monster House. I, I do. I, I remember that. It was sort of kind of, and it, it, it had the tenor of a, of a proto Harmontown kind of encounter where it was like, <laughs> we don't really do cocaine here, but, <laughs> but let's, let's just do this anyway because I have some. I just had some. Because uh, when I moved to LA, I found out you could just call someone and have it delivered. Acquire cocaine. And that wasn't the case in Milwaukee. So I was like, okay, I'll take some of that too. It's like cinnamon sticks. Yeah. And then it turns out, Cocaine is kind of a lot of fun. You, uh, we got a lot of talking done about technology and stuff. And then you spend a lot of time doing stuff like this, uh, like very excitedly. Yeah, and then I tried to write Monster House, and I was like, the house is a monster, and then 
that's why the third act is just like, then they find some dynamite. Um, uh, but uh, I remember way back then, you, you blew my mind with, uh, with this concept that you, the, you introduced me to, which is the idea that, that intelligence is a field that is the actual thing that is alive in the universe, and that DNA, life itself, is sort of a subset of that because there's an intelligence to the universe, not, not, not intelligent design. <laughs> um, the, 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 the information, let's say information, not Does intelligence. Does anybody have any coke? <laughs> That the, that, the, that the idea is that, is that genetically reproduced life is sort of the pawn in the game. That it, 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 the reason why there's, there's living things uh, on Earth eating each other and evolving uh, based on which person or thing gets eaten uh, is because overall there's just, this, there's just this drive by this field that wants to continue to store more and more I mean, information. Not even feel, like I, I was sort of summarizing stuff that a guy named Robert Wright has written about. He's got a book called Non-Zero that he talks about this in great depth, which is basically like there's zero-sum encounters, right? You know, like if you're playing tennis, if you win, then I lose. Zero-sum, right? But there are encounters in which there are non-zero-sum that both can win. Uh, and And... Basically, entropy is the bad side of it, but the good side is if you put energy in, you can have things that, that both sides get more out of it. There's, there's an entropy cost. But like basically, things become more complicated and glommed together, and then those things become more complicated and glommed together, and that just happens. Whether you're a quark or a, a, an atom or a molecule. Or a lobo or a, or a or, zip head. Or a lobo or a Deadpool. Or, or a, a trank. A, <laughs> yeah. Or a, or, a, or, a, or a worm, or a person, or a corporation, or a human being, or a robo-galactic mega-brain, or, <laughs> or a flower. Right, and so the idea being that, uh, as far as our position in this whole thing, is that we are the pinnacle of genetic information of evolution. We have, we have... That we know. We have chromosomes jammed into the cells of our body that are so coiled up and so stuffed into each cell's nucleus that the the operation of them splitting takes like this enormously complicated process because it just spools and spools and spools of molecular information but the the sum total of that is that we're these monkeys that have these brains that, and we're building these computers and we're we're creating new ways to store information and we seem to be doing it compulsively like not all of those things make us better monkeys. <laughs> like they don't. We seem compelled to keep keep advancing our way of storing and transferring information, sometimes directly in spite of what actually profits us as primates. And so it's almost as if we're being compelled by some horrible larger. Not maybe not horrible. Maybe wonderful. <laughs> but certainly not a thing that's rooting for us. Something that's kind of like using us as a little slipper that it's going to get tired of and step out of and move on from. Well, the way I would say, look at it is like, if you look at yourself, you are, you consider yourself to be an, a, a singular entity, right? You are Dan Harmon. But at the same time, you are a corporation made up of trillions and trillions of cells that make up Dan Harmon. And Thank you. <laughs> and those cells are individual living beings. So, and there is a long history of those cells uh, uh, learning how to be living, like how to make up a corporation of tens of trillions of trillions of cells that can actually work as a gigantic corporation, all doing their little jobs to be this thing that on the level of a cell, you could not imagine, cells don't picture that the thing that they make up is conscious in the, the way that they know. You know, if they're just like, well, here I am, a capillary cell, and I've got my buddies here, we're all sort of pasted together, and we see all the dudes go by, and blah, 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 and you ever think about God, you ever think about there's a guy named Dan that we're all a part of, and it's like, shut up and do your job, man, like, process that oxygen, uh, and, but you are that entity, right? and now we also make up other entities, we are parts of corporations, we're parts of nations, we do not think that the thing United States has a, a, an identity, a sense of self in the way that we ourselves think that we have. 
that. But why do we think that? It's completely arbitrary that we, only we, this collection, this assemblage of matter and life, have the capacity to, to have an identity and none, none others do. I mean, what would this, what, 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 <laughs> what, what would the macro picture look like if we were all, would it end at the outskirts of the earth? Are we, are we just stuck on this blue marble and like connecting with each other and trying to form a multicellular organism on the planet that will then reproduce? I Is hope it, so. Or is it more sinister I, than that? Is it like... So, I hope so, and it is more sinister than that. Is it, is it... Maybe there's another planet, like, many light years away that's having the same experience happen to it, and the actual overriding principle is that we're supposed to combine with that, and we have absolutely no say in, in where this goes. Who cares, though, right? Uh, I mean, I guess, well, no, we, 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 we all care. Everybody's got a stake in it. Not only every human being, but everything in the universe is a stake in its own existence. Uh, you know, like a, a five million, 10 million years ago, there was no such thing as human beings. 50 million years from now, they will look back and go like, oh, that's right, there's no such thing as, as like a, a, some kind of Borg-like entity that covers, you know, like light years of, of space and time. How, how much time do you think we have as humans? Hey. I'm going to defer to Dan on that one. Uh, uh, Stephen, uh, the joke with Dan and I when we meet Stephen was always, "What's currently your biggest concern?" And you was like, "Super volcanoes." That oh, that's so old. <laughs> <laughs> what, what right now is your main like? What, what's the what's plastic the, bottles? Plastic bottles. <laughs> that's the main thing. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just terrified now. My biggest fear now... Did you ever watch that Doomsday more, Prepper show? You're more worried about plastic bottles than super volcanoes? Uh, yes. Really? Did you guys, plastic bottles are pretty immediate, I would say. Did really? you think they're immediate? hear that Tom Selleck was stealing water to water his avocado orchards? Stealing it from who? From the city... No, the county of Ventura. He's, That's he's, where I hail from. He stole water? Yeah, he hired people to uh, collect water, and then they brought I, it to his... I read his... about that. That's some fucked up shit, man. I'd imagine they're watering his mustache, though, you know? <laughs> does he sell avocados, or does he just he love eating like them? He owns an orchard or a farm or something, He yeah. loves guacamole. He, makes, he, makes, he has these parties where he's like... <laughs> if, if you haven't had Tom Sell's guacamole, <laughs> you, you have not had guacamole. <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you my big panic. It's not water bottles, although it sounds like I need to learn more about the immediacy of that. My, my new thing is, like, I, I just, it's just economic collapse. It's just the idea that everything is based on this, like, fake uh, idea that something's worth something compared to something else. And that if the, if the American dollar was worth a dollar on Monday and then was worth 70 cents on Tuesday... The six hours from then, like, there would be fires on the horizon like Blade Runner. And then six hours from that, cops would stop showing up for work. Because they'd be like, That's, that shit's on fire. And, like, and I'm going to go home and protect my family with my gun from work. Uh, and, and, like, it would just, th th that's, I mean, before I worry about something as cool as a super vo volcano. I actually Which is very cool. A cool thing to worry about. Everybody read about Super volcanoes, because I don't want to diss your concern about super volcanoes. They are a great way for humanity to be exterminated. You were the first one to lay this out. Yeah. You, you were very, about five years ago, you were very concerned about the, the super volcano under Yosemite. Uh, uh, and now not so much. Yeah, I... I, I, I uh, but, uh, but I would agree with you. Like The economic problem is... I want to build a big bomb shelter underground and just... To have water and shotguns that, and that, dogs. Like, the 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 <laughs> <laughs> just just water and dogs. Uh, <laughs> then everything else will be okay. Yeah, because I think you can milk dogs and live off of them. <laughs> I'll have and feed the water. Uh, I mean, I'll have mice for the dogs I think, to eat. I, I think if, if if you could milk dogs, we would already have done that. <laughs> if you could get a dog to milk another dog, we would have done that. But if you if you teach them to fish. We really fuck dogs up. We fuck dogs up. And we're, we're close to the ideal, ideal and idealized economic metaphor. Like, we, we're starting out of, like, we live on a desert island, and you get two coconuts, and I catch one fish, and we'll... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, no, we're all fucked up. That now, but now that we've moved into like dog water milking systems, <laughs> uh, you see, when you see a schnauzer, that's that's a dog. That's a regular dog whose limbs have been bred to be like little flippers. But I do want to return to what you were saying. Like the, the the economic concern, which I will, what I would summarize as going the problem being that. Even though everybody here, we're all capitalists, right? Capitalism, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Capitalism. Oh, boo. Also correct. Um, but almost the same now, because. Well, but, but the weird thing any is, like, anarcho anarcho syndicalists out there. <laughs> but even even the hard people. people who self-identify as capitalism, you gotta go. Like, what is capitalism? Is the understanding that capital plus labor equals wealth? No. Like, well, no, it is. Like, it's, that's, that's capital. It's like, that when, like, workers create wealth. Wealth is accumulated. That becomes capital. Land is capital. If I own a piece of land, that's capital. But I can't make it productive without workers. Workers okay. create wealth, but capitalists own all the wealth. So, exactly. Wait, so I don't want to miss this point. I'm too stupid. To, like, take me through this, well, like actually, a children's book. Like, like the... Uh, capital is the unpaid portion of labor. Uh, if, Surplus if, if, is the unper uh, uh, unpaid if, if portion. If everybody got, got paid for what their work, their work was actually There would worth, be no profit. There would be no capital. Capital right, is, right. is the part that you don't pay your laborers. So to the extent that we don't pay our workers, that's capital. Well, so, that's, that's profit. I own something. I have property rights. I own it. Now, my ownership of it does not allow it to become productive. I apply labor to it. I pay the laborers something less than I sell it for. Right. The gap is my profit, which exactly. then I which feed back into my additional capital. So I become richer and richer, but then I also push forward the story, which is that basically, oh, money and wealth is a function of owning and being rich, rather than no, money is created by people who work. It's just that simple, and yet you don't really quite hear people go like, oh, well, all these rich people, like, uh, you don't want to take their value or their, their wealth. It's like, well, it is their wealth because they own the means of production, but it's not like they made it. The people who made it made it. Yep. <laughs> I think we could. I think we could make this a little clearer for the common man, even though I understand it. If I do it as a rap, yo, 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 capitalism, yo, it's forming a schism between the rich and the poor. It's like jism, starting over. <laughs> Yo, I fucked your mama. I fucked your mama. I fucked your mama so hard it hurt. I fucked your mama like my name was John Hurt. It's the same word. Sorry. Start, starting over. Yo, yo. A dollar's worth this, a dollar's worth that. I fucked your mama till she was blind as a bat. Flying around using sonar. I fucked your mama, I got a bonar. I, I put it inside her and she was like, that's quieter. Starting over, starting over. Oh, you were doing a surplus value. Yo, what's up with that shirt? Yo. Are you going to work? Yo, what's up with your hair? Yo, don't take the stairs. Starting over. Didn't work in the car, didn't work either. There you go. Yo, yes, yo. Yes, 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 capital. Feel it. Capital. Rap, rap, rapidly rap. Rapidalism. I'm going to have a rap attack. I, I'm, I'm going to rap good. I'm going to rap good. I'm going to rapping good, and I'm rapping real good. Just starting over, starting over. <laughs> There are seven wonders of the world. This rapping is is about to be worth it. Yo, I went out to the street. I needed some bread and I got some meat. I was on a protein diet, so I had the latter. I fucked your mama like she was pancake batter. I poured her pussy into a pan. 
I fought her as hard as I can, but it wasn't hard enough, so I got a new job sucking your dad's knob. I love your dad now. I love your dad now. Progressive. I love your dad now. Progressive. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Love your dad now. Your dad made love to me. Oh, he shit. fucked him so hard that I broke my knee. Oh, shit. Don't fucking try to stop me. Try to shut me down. No, no. Just Power getting on a roll. Yes. Yo, yo, yo. I met your dad in the fall of 72. I fucked him so hard I lost one of my shoes. I was like, where, where did it go? He said, <laughs> there's a guy that's mad at the back now. All right. 9-11. All right, that didn't work. You can't force it. You can't force it. Oh, no, you can't. No, you, you, I, well. I think we learned a lot about the nature of capitalism. The, the, the... I, f I hope so. I think, you know, there's 500 people here, Certainly and I thought, no one is gonna leave even here if you without... force it. For those of you only listening, Dan was presented by a hilarious gentleman with a Bloody Mary with uh, everything on top of it. <laughs> well, did the... A, 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 a BLT's on it? Did the, a, a, a did, the, did, the, did the people at Tin Roof make this, or was this assembled I by... I don't know. Also, I wouldn't drink it. I think it, it was phoned in from Alaska. Something like that. Nikki and Nicole made this out of... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Nikki and Nicole. Nikki or Nicole? Wait, so they, do they work here or not? May I get a Fernet Branca by any chance? Have you got Fernet Branca back there? Okay. Upstairs? What, what, what's their name upstairs? Upstairs, can I get a Fernet Branca? Can we make a human, we can make a, a human chain and get me a Fernet Branca. So you're still on the Fernet? I, like, I wondered if you'd moved on from that. This motherfucker's eating a cheeseburger. How is it? This is the best Bloody Mary I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Let's, let's bring my soulmate up, Aaron McGathy. <laughs> you want to do a rap? Rap it, rap it. Rap it out, rap it out. You always backstage for a long time, waiting for a rock. Oh. Yeah, Wait. keep rapping. Park, don't know if the bit went well, was unceremoniously excused and I can't walk in these shoes. Welcome to Magatha Tech. This is Magatha Tech. My favorite color is red orange. A favorite color is just that, like having a favorite movie. You just see it and you like it. When you see a favorite movie and you have a favorite movie, it doesn't mean you want to live in it. You just like it more than the other movies. Yeah, but... Colors! Colors! White is all the colors together! Yes. But... I, uh, is Citizen Kane better or worse than Star Wars? And that's like, oh, what's my favorite movie? It doesn't. Well, okay, come on, you're Star, reaching. Star Wars. You're reaching. Bad, bad crowd to ask. People have favorite movies all the time, and you have a favorite movie too. <laughs> <laughs> that was Luke Skywalker losing his sled. <laughs> uh, uh, we hadn't planned the end of that bit or any of that bit. And I'll tell you, there are a few things sadder than walking off the stage in these shoes down that thing. Why is that sad? Because I can't walk in these shoes because they're, these are uh, the, these, these crazy heels from that movie. <laughs> and also, no woman ever wants to be sent to her paddock. <laughs> even if she owns the paddocks, even if she drives, they are hers. Yeah. All right, so how's it going? Uh, you have uh, any, any complaints? <laughs> I rap 
talked about the color thing. But what is that? Seriously, you have a favorite color? Yes, red orange. Red orange. Can't red even orange. can't even pick. Not red and orange, but like a red orange. Yeah. Okay, favorite I, my favorite is blue, yellow, green. <laughs> I guess I'm better so at it. So that's like a teal. Okay. It's more like double green, isn't it? What's your favorite color, Spencer? <laughs> uh, it's extra green. Yeah, just extra green. I think Dad just My favorite green. color is green. It's yeah, a good it's color. A funny, it's a funny thing to be mad about. I think you should let people do their own thing. I mean, why do I'm you I'm not care? telling them to do anything. I, You're I, telling them to die because they ha- like colors. I announced that I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And they fucking, they rose up and they were like, finally, someone says it. Who has a favorite color? They're like, finally, finally. The fucking... <laughs> but then... Who here has a... F- who, li- who likes a color? More than other... Thank you. Who has a favorite one? All right, well, let's go. I'm going to... Uh, is there... I wish we had a wireless mic because I just want to like... I just want to run through and get everyone's favorite color. Like... <laughs> you, you have lots I mean, of... Why would you that. stop people from Dan? that? I'm what, I don't want to. I want to. I want to celebrate Dude, you, it. You have, lots, you have lots of cord there. I, I think you can probably roam. I don't think I can make it out there. Check it out. You, you, you have lots of cable there in front of you. Oh. Baby blue. Baby blue. You're the one person I'm not going to ask. Now, Dan, you came down pretty hard on Bloody Mary's. Navy attitude. blue is the Tim Allen of colors. <laughs> oh shit. Harvard's full of protein now. He's going to fucking come right after you. <laughs> Don't die, Dan. You the Heimlich? Are you choking? I just inhaled a piece of burger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> you know how when you, just a fleck of food goes into your lungs? Yeah, it's That's not going to kill me. It's just going to bum me out for the next hour. <laughs> See what? They said you're great. Davis and Gray, what? Davis suit gray. Davis suit gray. That, that, that's a good oh, color. Favorite color. That's well, the navy blue guy. With, but with, with why the don't red. we do a rainbow <laughs> prism from red to purple? Yeah. And you applaud for your favorite color. McGathy White. McGathy White. That's just the navy blue guy. He's, his favorite color is pandering. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking schmoo. Yeah, you you guys okay? take over the show. I'm going to die. Are you going to fucking die? Think you flew too close to the sun, Icarus. I inhaled. I, I inhaled like point a piece out of... The color wheel is horse shit. Because it's not a wheel. It starts at ultraviolet and goes to infrared. We just curl it up because we can't see anymore. Oh, shit. You get... Science snap. You guys have to... I mean, colors are all perceptive. So you have to take at, over the show. Starting at red. I'm going to die. Do you need so, the Heimlich? <laughs> the guy who's telling you colors are bad can't swallow properly. <laughs> which is something that babies can do. Also, you came out, you opened with you hate Bloody Marys with food in it. Now, you're, now it's going to kill you. I like the food pipe. I, I, I explain here's, something here. Here's why you don't want food you drink. You tried to drink your food. You can't drink food. As you drink over 40 years. All right, here we go. Starting at the top of the rainbow. Red. Orange. Yellow. Green. Cool. Blue. Purple. Interesting. Smart crowd, right? Because smart people are... You know what I like? Black, I like black, black, black is the absence shade. of all colors. This, this guy in the front row, I like seafoam green once in a while. I like a nice oh, seafoam. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, these MC John shirts are all in seafoam yeah, green in seafoam and a minty, minty 90s color. Black is the absence <laughs> of all color. But Dan- if we're doing a different scale, who loves black? <laughs> Jeff Davis suit gray. White. Yeah. Who hates all colors? <laughs> See, monochrome. Grayscale. I'm just warning you guys, you kids, your esophageal flap. <laughs> it's you know how your toilet. Some of you guys have uh, apartments, and you know, have you had to fix your toilet because there's like a little flap that makes it sealed, and then it, the tank can fill up with water. You know how it rots away, <laughs> and you have to replace it. 
42. <laughs> Vodka. Did you guys? <laughs> and then it's like, it doesn't seal all the way. So Has anybody... I'm just warning you, drink smoothies. Dan, have you ever hidden anything in your toilet tank? Thanks, Steve. Oh, oh thank you, Steve. Hey, Steve. Steve was one of the raptors earlier. Can I have a sip of your Bloody Mary? Yeah. <clears throat> Oh my God! What if what if that's how I had died? Oh man, uh, San Diego's my hometown. It's nice to. We still live in Bankers Hill. Just keep going. Do you have any friends here that want to talk about science or anything? You okay then? No. I'm no, I'm not. I, but it's but it's fine. I'm saying. I'm, I'm take, asking as a friend. Take the show. I have to keep coughing up little tiny. Uh, molecules of burger because I, I, I inhaled a, and it was like a little it like it slid down yeah, yeah, past the esophageal flap wash, there's a little Han Solo has invaded the Death Star of my body <clears throat> wash it down with some bacon was anybody at the at the Star Wars uh, panel that must have been tremendous like Harrison Ford came out they, you guys did they weren't they, you weren't told that any of those people were going to show up right Car- Carrie Fisher showed up and Harrison Ford showed up and then J.J. Abrams like took them all out like Andy Kaufman style. Said we're all going to a concert, and then the uh, the San Diego Philharmonic played uh, Star Wars. You went to our, my panel, thank you, where we had to try to do a Rick and Morty table read under the fireworks from J.J. Abrams. <laughs> Didn't that help? No, it was fine. It was great. Have I ever met Kevin Smith? Is his his panel oh. was after the Star Wars panel, and so there was just no one there. <laughs> I'm not laughing at his misfortune. You sh- I, yeah, you funny. are. It's, it's, it's fine. We all do. <laughs> He's fine. He's Kevin Smith. Okay, uh, t- t- touchy points. Dave Grohl and Kevin Smith for these guys. I think that was Kurt Is this Cobain, their hometown? Though. It was Kurt Cobain they were reacting to. Uh, Everyone loves that guy for some reason. Was, was, was Dave Grohl here? No. I, I was at a bar with a, 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 a in New York, and Dave Grohl had just played Foo Fighters, and he, we're at a bar, and he comes down, and... Uh, he had just played for fucking three hours. He plays like he's indefatigable on stage. And he had diapers with him. He's holding a bag of diapers. And I said, do you have a baby or are you just, are you just really eccentric? And he goes, oh shit, man. I wish I was that eccentric. <laughs> he goes, I got a baby. He puts one on in the middle of a guitar solo that takes so long and he eats a piece of pizza and doesn't stop until he shits it out. Uh, what's, what's the name of the, the animator um, who created Bugs Bunny? Tex. Tex Avery. Tex Avery uh, was such a workaholic and so dedicated to to his work that he would he would push his bladder so so far where he, when he was working and he wouldn't want to get up and go to the bathroom. It was like a thing about him until one day his bladder burst. Or, like it was working so hard that his bladder. And it, when it went go. <laughs> it went. <laughs> That's poop doc. I still have half a hamburger lodged right on the no. lip no, of no, my esophagus. Now you can work back from that and go like what. <clears throat> classic Bugs Bunny cartoon did that incident inspire? <laughs> like, I thought uh, that was one of the good ones. Uh, <laughs> it, was it What's Opera Doc? Was it the, the Figaro? What's Opera Doc is the best one. Yeah, it's probably that one. Yeah. You can tell how much money they spent on, uh, on Looney Tunes cartoons by how many whiskers are on Bugs, Bugs Bunny because it, it, it took longer and took more money to, to track the whiskers. Um... <laughs> All right. Comics, so, right? Cartoons, they're so funny. Can I check in about what, 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 I don't know how much time we've done. It kind of, I, I black out at a certain point. I, I would say uh, we started at 7.15. We have about a half hour. Okay. So we'll check in with Spencer for five to seven minutes. Hey, <laughs> yeah. How's, how's your Comic-Con been? It's been pretty good. I found out uh, that that health app on your iPhone is just constantly tracking you without you telling it to. <laughs> And I've been you get a message on your phone that just said stop. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, what? Stop and it's, fucking, it's bro. Like your heart is about to give out. It's really helpful. It's going to save lives. The iWatch in stores now. Anyway, uh, no, I've, like, I've been walking like 12 miles a day or something. Not today, because I was dead. But yeah, no, I'm just exhausted, man. Oh, yeah. It's fun. I lost, I lost my badge uh, at some point. 
I heard that somebody snarfed it off of you, I, like New Orleans style. It could have been that, or it could have just been like caught by an errant wind or something. But it was around your neck. Yeah, that's the thing. It, like, it might have been the notorious San Diego badge snarfer. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. But they're yeah. really expensive, so it's kind of the equivalent of, of the picking someone's pocket. Around, you would have thought, like, hard. with petty thievery going on, there would be like a multitude of Spider-Men to show up and stop <laughs> that happening. <laughs> um, Do you think it's possible for somebody to get that close to you and actually unclip the yeah, thing absolutely. from the lanyard? I think that's not what happened, but it's absolutely oh. possible. What do you think happened? I think probably I like brushed by someone and it activated the clasp and declasped it and it like <laughs> fell, fluttered to the floor and then someone picked it up right after. How many of those God people are for real? I can't tell the difference between the... the I know, uh, here's, here's the thing. A lot of people are actively antagonizing them and it's like, what are you... Why are you better? Just because you're against them? I, I don't know. There's this guy that was yelling at him to suck his balls and that they were going to hell if they didn't suck his balls. And it's like, now there's just two people being annoying. I don't, I don't, that's not what I want. Everyone enjoys the con in their own way. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a fir- I'm a firm believer in if someone else starts it, you get to finish it, though. I not mean, that, that, not that that finishes it. But. I think that the Christian people should uh, should talk about how much they repent every day if they're going to be telling other people to repent all the time. What if you guys found out that there It comes a, off as high-minded. What if you found out that there's a graphic novel about religious protesters and that those people were doing like the most uh, extravagant cosplay ever and they were just like in deep... <laughs> Well, it's, it, has, it has happened. We were talking about this, that there was a video game that was coming out, and they did guerrilla marketing where they had a group of people pretending to be Christian protesters of this game, and it, and it broke that they... It was fake, that they had posed as... They they'd made a fake group of people picketing the game. Um, and then, for some reason, people got mad about that. I'm not sure the 15-year-old version of me would get mad at that. I would be like, well, that's like, like cool. Like pretending to be protesters? Yeah. I think that's a little weak. I, I, like, I'm not sure why. I don't know who it's because hurting. Like, because, because, it's, because it's, I guess it's, it's making fun of people who are just kind of sad already. And Well, if you're one of those down, people, like, then I guess you could get mad. But I don't think the people that were getting mad, I think they were just video gamers yeah, that were right. like, you shouldn't try to manipulate me. What? I sell you video games. And <laughs> manipulate you for a living. I convince you you're a space okay, man. Okay, like, let me put it this way. Like, supposing you went around and, and, your, and your cosplay was, like, video game nerd, and you built yourself, like, a fat suit, and, and you covered yourself with Cheetos, and you became this, like, awful entity. Like, would that be good? In order, to, be in order to evangelize cosplay? the message of... Well, well, the way, would that be, you would be kind of incarnating our picture of this without really... I gotta say, as long as you're not blocking traffic, I don't mind any of that because it doesn't... It doesn't... (laughs) As long as you're not, like, obstructing anyone from doing what they want, if all you're doing is sending messages out into the ether, if those messages are dishonest, then hopefully the message you could draw from that is, oh, I should... I should put less stock in things strangers tell me. Yeah, and I okay. think that's a good, like, a good way for, to, be, to grow up as a kid. It's like, I don't know what that guy's jam is. Like, he's pretending to, he's dressed like a banana, but he could be a hitman. Well, why uh, don't those people write a comic where God is the hero? Oh, they the do, hero? and they're amazing. <laughs> they write lots of comics. They have, they have bands, they have radio stations. Uh, uh, yeah, no, those people want to be just want to be argue, argued with. I, against my parents' wishes, when I was like 12 years old, joined in San Diego an evangelist uh, youth group where, like, at the end of the first meeting, they're like, okay, you're new here. Here are a bunch of booklets. Um, it's really, really cool to witness to people. So, like, just tell us how many people you've witnessed to. And I'm a really competitive person, and I was like, okay, is there some sort of game with how many people I can get in heaven? I can get more people into heaven than that guy. And the... The next week, you came back to the youth group, and everyone would be like, well, I was in an elevator, and uh, I, I stopped the elevator, and I scared Whoa. a guy, told him, told him we're all going to die, and then I gave him a book, like, and I, I think he's going to come to church. Like, all these, like, tricky, <laughs> tricky stories. Um, and then, and, like, the dumb joke is, is there an app for that? But then, like, but there must be apps for that. There must be, like, Christian 
groups making apps for witnessing, going, okay, like, here, tap yeah. this in. The thing and is, like, yeah, those people, those people with the signs, like, don't, the thing that makes me mad about it, like, I was brought up Christian and my dad's a preacher, and I'm not a practicing Christian, but, like, I wouldn't know, I don't know anybody ever in the history of my life that would do that stuff. That's obviously about, like, getting people angry at you. No one walks by a sign that says, you're going to hell, and says, like, oh, cool, yeah, tell you, me more. You never see him succeeding. About me going to hell. It's never, a, there's never anyone stopping like, yeah, it's a, man. It's a weird thing from a logical perspective if you were an evangelical Christian. Why would you go to the place where 60,000 people were doing what they shouldn't do? Why not, why not go to some place where there's like 300 people doing the worst thing ever? Like, go, trying, go solve murders. Well, they're trying to like, cure... We caught you. You murdered. Yeah. Jesus wouldn't I do mean, that. And you could actually elaborate. help the police. Well, they're trying... They're, it's, it's exposure. It's like they're trying to spread right. a They're disease. promoting a product. They're selling a comic yeah, book. Yeah, except the product is in their minds, no, not going be. to hell, which is a pretty good product to pitch. It's catchy. Um, the, and the one they really believe in. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, like, to them, it's literally the most important thing in the universe, which, I mean, if it were true, makes sense. And then when you listen to what they're saying through the bullhorns, they sound like the dumbest people in the world, because they're going like, they're, do you believe in a guy with a cape? That's going to solve your problem? Everyone's like, no, I don't believe in a guy with a cape. <laughs> Do you believe in the gospel of Gandalf? Like, I have a no, job. I work believe. at Verizon. I don't fucking, like, what? I compartmentalize. Like, uh, are you crazy? I can't, I, I, I went, I'm spending a lot of money here. I saved up my vacation days. What are you, what, uh, this, isn't, this isn't fucking Mount Sinai. What do you think I'm doing? Like, I'm dressed as a Cylon. I'm fucking enjoying myself. I'm doing this instead of rape. I'm doing this instead of murder. I'm doing this instead of ox coveting. I'm doing this instead of theft. I'm doing this instead of almost all ten things your God says I shouldn't do. Well, I was no, that's, it's not, because it's not real evangelism. It's just, it's kooky. I went to a Miley Cyrus concert uh, a year ago um, in, in Los Angeles. Uh, no need to boo. But I was, at, I was at this concert, and those people were there, but, and then their sides were like, Miley is telling girls to be prostitutes. And all these, you know, it's a bunch of 15-year-old girls at this concert were standing on a balcony flashing these guys for hours to the extent that I was like, oh, the way you see young tits is to show the sign at this concert. It was awful. I'm sorry I just said the word tits. I don't ever ever. You said it. young tits. That's the much yeah. more marketable. But also, yeah, young tits is a really great name for an all-girl punk band. Uh, if anybody needs a bassist, that's all I want to do. A great name for an album. Band we're giving away free copies of our zine, Young Tits, at the door. Toss the um, river and Young Tits. I have one more question about these guys with the signs. Okay. Why are they always on the other side of the railroad tracks from the convention center? Do they, do they, I would assume that they would have no compunctions about getting right up in the convention center. I think they want to keep it moving the closer. I mean, right outside the, the Marriott Marquis, there's people. So it's like they are on the periphery. Like, it seems like they're, they're trying to get close, so. Uh, but do you think people are preventing them from being close? Like, I think do if they, they were standing with... still that whole time, yeah, they'd be able to like, keep it moving or something. But I did see some, some folks with their signs, like, right on yeah. the right outside the front of the convention center. Yeah, right by the Marriott. They have one badge that they keep swapping. <laughs> it just now says you be Jesus. Kyle. It was sort of weird because I was like, well, what, well, like, what sin do you guys think all these people here are committing? They're starting in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they start I with repent, hilarious. which I is very accusatory. I mean, it's e easy target. Some kid that's dressed as poison ivy. It's like shame on you. You're a terrible person. It's well, it, it doesn't have to be shame. It's like, hey, man, free prizes in heaven. You know, <laughs> that free that would work. Stand, get early in line for God. Yeah, yeah but they're there's not no waiting in line. But that's to get not to their... the kingdom of Lord. Unless I'm mistaken, and I've been coming here for, I've seen them like five years in a row. Unless I'm mistaken, that's not the messaging on their advertising. That's they're what's not, confusing. They're not saying, have a good Comic Con, but get it out of your system, and then we'd like to talk to you about a real superhero. That would be cool. That yeah, would be fine. That no, would that's work. why it's, that's why they're, it's they're saying, people. don't, they're saying, congratulations on driving here from Phoenix. Stop right now! <laughs> uh, Phoenix! <laughs> Then where is the scriptural basis for their objection? It's like, where in the Bible 
says it's not it's not real christians it's don't not real dress people. up in a costume i'm sure there's some people in this audience who are but christian like that's not anything that you would ever do is that it's a ridiculous. dot is that a dot we're connecting there? Why are you they worried that say... Christianity is going to be betrayed by... We're talking about no. those seven yahoos. We're not talking They're about not Christianity. Saying, no, comics are evil. They're saying everyone's going to hell because you're not saved. That's we're talking about Christian. those people. No, we're not... they, I've There's never heard one say you're going to hell because of comics. They, I've never heard them say that. They might, but I've never heard no, it. Well, I've heard them kind of like... Kind of protest. Like They're comics are lead you into witchcraft and that's the, if the, the saying scriptural, that, sure. doctrinal okay. line, right? What I heard, what I heard when I stopped to listen was actually like they said, "You guys are worshiping characters that have superpowers, right. and Jesus is the only one that should have superpowers." Like that's old school so it's craziness. Like, and it's sort of be like, "Thou shalt not have any more gods." I, yes, above idolatry. Our God. Yeah. And it's like, well, wait, are you saying that your God is a story? No, they're saying he's not. And if you make up stories about people that can like do magic tricks, it's better. I'm uh, making up stories. We should play some uh, Shadow Rise. Yeah, yeah. The role of Jesus will be played by Spencer Crittenden. Can we, can we pretend my character inhaled a meatball? Also, you, you, you never had a drink of that Bloody Mary. You only ate the... Uh... I ate the fucking burger, and then, I, and then it was just one moment where I was like, I just took a breath because I was going to go out and talk to people about their favorite color. And then, God damn it, it ruined my night. I'm on the, re I'm, I'm the recoup now. I can't believe somebody had the terrible instinct of giving me a whole bottle of Fernet Branca on stage. <laughs> Who wants some? Is that legal? I know it's illegal, but fuck it. Oh, by the way, have we, have we, have we praised this venue? I think, I think Jeff yeah, did. So the Tin Veteran. Roof is... Uh, yeah. The Tin Roof! We, we booked this place very late in the game, and uh, they were so accommodating, and uh, like, like they're, they're, the room fit us all, and they've been very... Uh, very gracious, and there were like four bottles of kettle in the green room, and uh, they're, I don't know, they're just nice and professional and wonderful. And food have, on uh, food on top of that. Uh, and hopefully, maybe we can do this thing every year or something uh, for, for Comic-Con. Nice. And thank you to Elizabeth and Steve that were Raptors and are also selling merch over here. It's so wonderful. Thank you. And let's hear it for the area of the electromagnetic spectrum that you guys cheered the most for. Greenish. Yeah. With a slight nod to purple. The two You're most. I like those people with signs, but with colors. Yeah. And it's like, just let people How dare like you? Colors. Uh, if, if you like something reflecting into your eye, why don't you like purple? Why red? Oh, God. This is how we die. Oh. Oh, no. It's okay. Sorry. It's sort of like, if you really believe in this color, can you hold up something? That is that color? What? Right, like, if it's your favorite color, oh, do you wear that color? My favorite color is red. Really? Prove it. Are we Show really me something red. Are we tracking to this? Like, I thought we solved this. We didn't so solve we did it. it. Colors are dumb, and having a favorite one is dumb. Fair enough. It's not, not right. You have a favorite food. That doesn't mean you necessarily eat it all the time, or a favorite movie. Or if a you're talking about thing. macaroni and cheese, it, that is what it means. <laughs> I would, you could shoot me into space in a bowl of macaroni and cheese, and I would never go, where's the pizza? I think, I think the most important, the more important thing is like exploring why you're, you're, you're so angry that people have a favorite thing that you don't understand. Because I am autistic? There we go. It's not easy. <laughs> no, no, come on, come on, come on. What? Is, are, is, is, is so angry that people have a favorite thing? I think they're lying. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't no. mean anything. Also, you hate colors as a principle. You said uh, you don't like colors. But like, is it colors he hates colors because I love colors. I do that to upset person. Aaron. He does it to make me sad. But the truth is you can get all important information out of a black and white image. Right, but I don't do that to you about things that you love. Like what? What, would you, what if you tried? What would... What would <laughs> Let's play Shadow Run. This is boring. I want to yeah. play Shadow Run. Yeah! Hit the gas pedal. Shadow Run! Shadow, Shadow Run. run. Alright, yeah. so uh, what, what character is Steven playing? Uh, should he be Dr. Friend, probably? Uh, you know, let the dice fall where they may. 
Do you follow the show at all, Stephen? Do you know? You know. What he's a about? huge I fan. I would say I would pitch that Stephen should be Doctor Friend, right? I don't. I don't care. You're 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 a, you're a, a, a troll doctor who uh, does no harm, but also is a, a very complicated fellow. And so, and so do do we have an extra? And we, oh, we have uh, a, yeah, we have a Demorge sheet, but we have a Demorge who plays uh, Hurt Hurt Hurtold Boobidoo. This guy's got a lot of friends pointing at him, so I guess we'll use him. Yeah, no, over here, man. Come up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sit here and use that mic. <laughs> no, stand behind that earlier, beam. Earlier, I came to this venue at 4 p.m., and all the great people who work here were like, okay, so your band, they put their equipment, I'm like, oh, no, it's a, it's a comedy show, and they're like, yeah, we don't, we don't really understand what it is. We've, uh, we've gotten mixed things. And then cut to this moment where we're like passing out folders or like, no, really not a band. Super not a band. Uh, did I hear your friends calling you Gobot? What was uh, no, your... it's uh, Craig Knight. So, Craig Knight, uh, sounds you, you, the same. You can call me Gobot, I don't care. That's All right, fine. Gobot. Oh, thanks, Dan. Oh. Trying to catch up quickly, though, I'm not seeing alignment anywhere. Where oh, yeah, are... Shadowrun doesn't have alignment. Oh, damn. Okay. This is in uh, D and D, my friend. Come on. It's a lot. It's a lot okay. darker shades than that. All right, Spencer. Do we have a guest? A, uh, a guest intro person? Yeah, a guest known only as Diego. Diego, I love it. <laughs> Where well, he's the saint of our, our the city we're in. Yeah. Right, shall we rock and roll? Yeah, yeah. Let's right. rock and roll. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Last time on Harmon Town Shadowrun, facing the ethical dilemma posed by Jesse Yellowman, our Shadowrunners decided to look into Baldwin Brown's research on BTL chips for themselves. Hortigard insisted the files shouldn't be sent over the matrix and stuffed a tied up and twisted Jesse Yellowman into the back of their Uber. Joined by Hackeye at Hank's Last Stand, Mercy, Eve, and Hortigard uncovered the research, showing that BTL chips can be used without addiction or harmful effects. Meanwhile, Jim Nightblade discovered Dr. Friend's increasingly hard feelings for his fellow. Will Dr. Friend's emotions go unrequited? Can Jim Nightblade keep the troll's secret safe in, w in a world where comlinks always seem to be on? Will Dr. Friend find agency in a world of hackers hooked on mountains of robo cocaine with no consequences? We find out now on Harmon Town, Shadow Town, Harmon Run Comic Con Edition. Diego. All right, so where are we? Yeah, right thanks, now? Diego. So you're back at Hank's Last Stand. Um, you. Jesse Yellowman is he's trapped in the, the trunk of your Uber, which is idling outside. You are paying for that. It's reasonable, though. So um, you're in Hank's last stand. You just, uh, Hack I just revealed the data. It's, it's about curing the ill effects of BTL chip use. And that's what that data you were searching for was. You still have it in your possession. You haven't turned it in yet. That, and that's what uh, Baldwin Brown wants? That's what Baldwin Brown was had, and he would like it, yeah. And but we were wondering, you know, do they want that information because they want to suppress it? Because they could make BTL chips healthy? Or, or do they want it so they could just sell BT, a bunch of BTL chips? They, 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 or they, a different option. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, oh no. Now, uh, I, I say... As, we, as a doctor, I say we vivisect him. Uh, and just get what we can. Vivisect who, doctor? Uh, our, 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 our tied up dude in the back of our car. You want to vivisect Jesse Elliman, the guy tied up in the trunk of the Uber right now? Yes. I think that seems like a, a very straightforward thing that a doctor would want to do. But what, what, what would the vivisection yield from him? Secrets. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's put a pin in that. And... <laughs> fair, fair. Uh... Hey, Hack Eye. Uh, yeah. What do you think a third possibility would be? Oh, man. Well, what are the first two possibilities? 
that the that the that our Johnsons is that what they're called? Sure. Yes. I'm oh, sorry. That, that, our, that, that, that our Johnsons. They, they mean good, or they're trying to suppress. That it. they want to make BTL chips uh, healthier for everybody, and sell a bunch of them, or they that they want to take the information and destroy it, like the tobacco companies. Those are two options. Right. Possible third, they don't want to use it. They just want to sell it for higher value. Sell the information? Yeah, fourth reason. Maybe, you know, they know something we don't. Maybe they think that BTL chips aren't addictive enough or are too addictive and want to change the nature of it. Maybe they're staging an all-out drug war and hope that clamping down on this. Who knows, man? If, they, if the corps are involved, who knows? H Hakai, you just got to get in there yourselves. Hakai, who, uh, which corporation makes the BTL chips? Do we know that? Oh, man. Everyone makes BTL chips. You could just make them if you have one of your nano forges. You know, you can print them out at home. You can also just download them on iTunes. Why aren't we just making our own? <laughs> what do you Is think? Is there anybody currently trying to kill us right now? Not at this moment that I am aware of. What do you think, Hordegard? Let's see, I'm a dwarf. <clears throat> I, I think we should uh, hack into the uh, Matrix, because that's what I was told in the Jesus synopsis. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go by. Well, uh, you know, it seems like... I, I know I keep going back and forth on this, but... <laughs> like... I don't know. We fucking we shadow run. We work for evil corporations. <laughs> okay. okay, we're shadow run. We're a group. We're, no, but we're more than a group. Uh, Come on now. We're a team. <laughs> and we know each other. We've worked together so much. It's time for us to get together and then look to our leader. <laughs> I think... I, I feel like I keep... I keep what? Rescue Baltimore? Rescue him. He's in the trunk. Everyone's no, no, a no, dipshit just, tonight. Just the yellow in the trunk. Oh, oh, rescue him from... Yeah, but... Well, just mean, open the trunk, dude. But if every mission we go on... I know I said the opposite last time, but... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Spencer, I'm really conflicted. Spencer, but... table talk. Is, uh, is Baldwin Brown with us in the bar right now? No, Baldwin Brown is at the place you delivered him to. Why don't we... we... I'm just... Can we vivisect somebody? <laughs> we got to do that later. Like, I'll, I'll offer myself. Just for interest. Like right. a self... I, I <laughs> order a drink from the bar. So, so ba Baldwin Brown is not at the bar we're at. Wait, what do you order? You order a... But, no. uh... Well, let's... <laughs> I order, I order a, uh, uh, a, a scotch on a rock, a single rock. All right. It arrives. Thank you. What's, uh, what's your story? Um, I'm Hank. <laughs> My hey. story is that I always wanted to own a bar, and then I did. And then all this future crazy dystopia shit happened. And now... <laughs> My bar is in a terrible part of town, so oh, I pretty much only cater to outlaws and ne'er-do-wells. Boy, Hank, uh, I'm just, first of all, I love the name Hank. Uh, Hank, you must see a lot of uh, shady stuff. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I don't like mentioning it because that'll get us all killed. Mm. So put it back in your pants. Can we get gun on with the... the I, I say, okay, I'm in the, this is the mood I'm in. I'm sorry, was my ordering a drink worse than vivisecting the person in the no, truck? No, there's no competition. If you're competing with him, you're in a fucked up place. Yeah, <laughs> then we both, then everyone is lost. So you can't hear me, you're in the car. I'm standing here with my ear to your mouth. You don't know that. <laughs> the, I say we take uh, yellow Pinkerman and uh, we, we take him to the Johnson, we, we, we give him everything, and we fucking walk away. I, with with I, a big score. I We're think, shadow runners. That? Right. I, 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 you know, I gotta like that. I say, Nightblade, I say we do that, and we walk away, and let's just wash our hands of this whole And shower. go on our yeah. next shadow run. Yes. I mean, yes. because, because I don't think there'll be any repercussions. I don't think this will be a cliffhanger. <laughs> I don't think this will ever come back to haunt us. I think we just do our job. Drop, get paid. Yeah, get paid and uh, mo money, uh, mo problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's get back in the Uber. Let's let's right. let's take our bounty back to the thing. We'll probably get a bonus. Of course. I mean, Mercy, you, you, when we get there, negotiate the fuck out of this and give us some extra money on this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm revving up. All right. All in the Uber. Everyone in. We got everybody? Here we go. 
no, 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 no. You're at the neutral drop zone. <laughs> Animation zone. You're at the neutral drop zone, the same place where you delivered Baldwin Brown to his truck-bound captors. It's an old, old truck lot in a shitty part of town across from all sorts of devastated warehouse and broken-down clinics and all sorts of buildings that used to house stuff and now only mostly house monsters and ghouls and all sorts of un uncouth shit. So there you are. You pull into the parking lot which is the neutral drop zone. And once again, you see a trollish businessman, an orcish businessman in a business suit sitting in a semi-truck. The lights turn on and he exits the truck and walks over to you guys. You better do all the talking. Okay. Foot, 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 foot. That's how I walk. <laughs> Hi. Hey there. Hello, I, uh, here, I'm sorry, hold on one second. I walk okay. back to my, to my crew. What am I, what am I doing? Oh, tell them, t- tell them we got the files they wanted, and I also we got yeah. a bonus for him, depending on how off. much he's willing to pay. Okay. But don't tell him he's in the tell trunk. The, the eagle's in the birdcage. Okay, okay, okay. Negotiate on a price for Jesse, Jesse Yellowman, but yeah, don't yeah. tell him he's in the, in the trunk. Okay, cool. All right, all right. Foot, 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 foot. Hey. Um, hey. I mean, I... Hey. So I have some files that I know you want. Yes, I do. All right. Uh, what, are you, what are you willing to give me for these files? The agreed upon amount. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say we want a little bit more because I know a certain someone. Hold on a second. <laughs> foot, 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 foot. Wait, what was Jesse his name? Yellowman. Jesse, Jesse Yellowman. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Foot, foot, and foot, it's foot. A, hey, wait, wait, wait. Foot, 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 foot. The agreed upon price is fine, but we'd like a bonus. Oh, okay, yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> Go for you know, six. I, I mean, here's the thing: is I promise I'm listening, but then I, then I just forget. I don't, sorry. <laughs> Got it. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Foot, foot, foot. I was foot. like, let's just take the money. Uh, je- we, that amount that you have is great. But, you know, we've done an extra great job. Mm-hmm. And similar to when you would go to a fancy restaurant and someone treated you extra special, we just like a little bonus, a little tip tip. What, in what way have you done an extra great job? <laughs> well, we can't reveal that. Oh. I use, I use, a, oh, I have a jammer. Okay, anyway. Yep. Um, no, I use. <laughs> I use my, my power, I use con uh-huh. and uh, negotiation, or I use negotiation. Okay. Look, we know where Jesse... Yellowman. Yeah, Yellowman, Yellowman is. Right, 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 right. I mean, obviously it's Jesse Pinkman, we were dancing around this, right? Okay. What? All right, sorry, sorry. sorry. We, we know where Jesse Yellowman is. And, Who's that? Uh, well... He's someone who's very valuable to you. Mm-hmm. I'm using negotiation. He's someone who's very, very important to your operation. 9/11. And we just want... <laughs> it's 9-11. It's apparently 9-11 and our, and our uh, uh, corrupted audience uh, <laughs> now celebrates it on their own. It's Hiroshima. Uh, for the most important date in all of our history and all Lang Syne. Okay. We did it. Look, we want to... Hold on a second. Foot, 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 foot. How much of a bonus? I just, well, just whatever they... Listen. I mean, is this just an emotional bonus? Do we need this? No, we need this. No, we don't. Can, okay. can we, we actually it. close we the deal? We, wrap up. He this, can just pay us. This, uh, this thing. It's a guy. Like, you boom. have like you, you have can like. Say, throw a couple a couple extra clams our way. Okay. And see right. if he says yes. And it's a okay, guy. Okay. It's okay. a guy that Billy Baldwin cares about. Right, right, right. So. Okay, okay. Foot, 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 foot. Uh, look, we just want a little extra money. You're good people. We're good people. Let's do this. Just throw us some money. Um, and this will all make sense. We know a young man who Mr. BB is very crazy about, and we know where he is, and it would be in your best interest to just throw us, throw us some money, and we'll shake hands and uh, look at these eyes. That like, sounds... Oh, and, and tell him that we have a secret. 
that he might want to give us a little bit more. You don't think that that was implied in what I said? But another, another secret. Okay, also we have another secret. <laughs> well, that One just seems excessive. <laughs> just to throw it on the pile, but secrets, you know, six, six secrets per uh, 100 gold coins. <laughs> cool. Your secret metric is off. Uh, I, um, yeah, we have another secret. Also, I have some secrets. Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> Just. What do you say? What I he... say 15% more than the originally agreed upon price. Thank you. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. We did it. She, she drives a hard bargain. <laughs> Where is this fellow? Uh, he's, we're. Um, well, wait here. Okay. Turn around. Uh, okay. I want you to face the other way. That's the way we do things. It's, well, it's our signature. It's totally fine. Don't attack me. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. I, I haven't I given say, you I, money. I say, when he turns around, we all take our pants down. And when he turns around, we just go, we're just fucking with you. <laughs> I open the trunk of the Uber. Uh, Jesse Elliman pops out, blinking in the evening light. Surprise! Uh, oh, I, I haul him over to the to the, to the Johnson. I, and I pull I pull uh, Jesse Elliman by the collar and I lean in and I say, "Look, if you tell them that you were in the trunk, bad things are going to happen to you." It doesn't matter now. That's the <laughs> that's the only point of that is just so they don't. Just let me follow my own bliss. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> I'm I'm not a very strong person. I'm just a talker. <sighs> Bad things will happen to you. And when I say goodbye. I feel like bad things will happen to me now that I'm being sold to a businessman. Baby, baby, baby. Don't think of it that way. Okay. Look, at any given time, we're all commerce. We're all bartered. It's, it's you know, it's life. You know, it's... So, uh, what are you guys gonna do with uh, these files? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna put them to good use. We've got big designs for our new sales force. Do you guys want to go bowling? <laughs> Fuck did we yeah. get paid? I, I'm I never bowling. I, do, I say we do it. Wait, <laughs> you've never bowled? No, I've bowled before. Oh, uh, why did you say you had never bowled? No, I said I'm down to bowl. Oh, you're down to... I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry. Let's no, no, go it's, bowling! No, it's cool. Yeah, let's go bowling, yeah. Can we get paid? Well, you seem to be occupied in other tasks. Oh, no, no we haven't been paid yet? You, you said, no. You said 50% on top of what we I did not. I said 15 very explicitly. All yeah. right, I, I, put out, I put out my hand to accept the appropriate amount of payment. He shoves a large silver briefcase heavy with bills into your hands. What? Paper money? <laughs> Are you effing serious? <laughs> oh shit, Dr. Oh. Friend, Dr. Friend, like, he's, he's, it's cool. It's cool. Okay. It's, it's money. This is the right. wrong time to be on your weird paper money thing. <laughs> but I tell you, the death, of the, the use of paper money will be the death of the feudalist yes. system yeah, but, but like, that we all rely upon. Oh, dear heavens. After handing you the suitcase, the Johnson pulls out a pistol what? and shoots Jesse Yellowman in the face. Oh, oh. oh. oh shit. Oh, shit. Well, I guess we had to know that was a possibility. I, guess, <laughs> I, think, I think that blood is literally on our hands and faces. Yeah, and, it's and, all over. And, and pants. Nice doing business with you. I've what? got a truck stop to attend. He pulls into his truck. That was worth 15%. <laughs> okay, Jesus. you are cold, our NPC contact in this adventure. You are a very cool person. Yes, yes. Uh, so, so he leaves. We're all splattered with Jesse Ellerman's blood. Yep. We're at, we're at Hank's last stand. And you hear the suitcase start to beep. Uh oh. Oh, shit. Now I really need a drink. <laughs> Cliffhanger! What? That's. Stephen Notley, everybody. Aaron McGathy. 
What's that guy's name? Who the fuck is that guy? Who is that Thank guy? Thank you very much. What? Oh, what's your name? Craig. Greg? It's Craig Knight. Knight. Greg Knight. Fuck it. Spencer Crittenden, everybody. Still sounds like Craig Knight. I'm Jeff Davis. Your mayor, Dan Harmon. This show brought to you by whoever gave me this bottle of Fernet Bronco. All right, San Diego, drive fast, take chances. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.